Interoffice memorandums are informal messages sent between two or more employees working within the same company. Memorandums can be used for company announcements. They can also be used to give employees important information. Good morning. Today for my job skills demonstration, I will successfully create an interoffice memorandum, or memo for short. Creating a memo is a very simple task. The supplies needed for my demonstration are a computer, mouse, keyboard, and a skateboard. A word processing software is also required. For my demonstration, I will be using Microsoft Word. While creating a memo, these safety precautions must be followed. Use proper keying techniques such as the home row key to prevent a repetitive motion injury called carpal tunnel. Practice good posture to prevent future back injuries. Be sure that all wires leading from the hardware in use are properly tied up or tucked away so no one will trip, injure themselves, or possibly damage expensive machinery. And finally, be sure that no food or drinks are present at your workstation. By following these precautions, you can execute any task without worry. Before we can begin creating the memo, we must first open a blank document and then properly format the page. To open the blank document, open Microsoft Word from the Start menu or Desktop. To format the page, go to File and click Page Setup. The Margins tab will show by default. In the top margins text box, you will type 2 inches. No other margins need to be set, so press OK. In a memo, the text has to be perfectly aligned. To align the text, we will need to set up tab stops. To set tab stops, go to Format and click Tabs. In the Tab Stop Position text box, type 1.5 inches. At the bottom of the window, click Set and OK. We are now ready to begin typing our memo. In an effort to save time in my demonstration, I will be using macros to create lengthy portions of my text. Macros are program keyboard combinations which can hold in a limited amount of text or graphics. The four lines that I have just entered are my memo's introductory notations. The first line, to, tells you who will be receiving the memo. The second line, from, tells you who has sent the memo. The third line, date, tells you what date the memo was sent on. And the fourth line, subject, tells you, of course, the subject of the memo. Notice how the two from date and subject notations are written in all capital letters and each followed by a colon. Also note how the four lines of text are all perfectly aligned with the tab stop that we have previously set. And also notice how the subject line is written in all capital letters. My introduction is not complete. With two returns underneath the introduction, we will enter the memo's body. Notice how all of the text in the memo's body is perfectly flush with the left margin. A memo written, written in this format is called a block business memo. We will now finish off our memo with three simple notations. Memos can sometimes include other documents such as meeting agendas, tables, or other important documents. To show that there is another document attached to this memo, we will type the attachment notation. In a business, the administrative assistant would type memos for employees in a higher office. When they had finished the memo, the assistant would type the sender's initials in all uppercase letters. Followed by a backslash, they would type their own initials in lowercase letters. These are called reference initials. For this demonstration, we will use capital JS, backslash, lowercase xx. If you want to send an additional copy of this memo to a fellow employee, you would enter the copy to notation, which consists of a lowercase c followed by a colon. You would then enter the employee's name. It would be a wise idea to include the employee's position in the company. For this demonstration, we will use lowercase c colon Sarah Martin, administrative assistant. My memo is now complete, but first we need to proofread, proofread our work for errors using spell check. To use spell check, go to Tools and click Spelling and Grammar. Correct any spelling or grammatical errors that you may have made. We will now save our final product. 
go to File, and click Save As. Save your, memo, save your memo under the appropriate folder and file name. Let's call this memo, Memo 1. We will now print a hard copy of our memo by going to File and clicking on Print. Be sure to print all of your memo, all attachments, and any additional copy that you may need. Now take your memo and all of its attachments and staple them together. This is what your final product should look like. Memos can also be circulated throughout a business using email. Emails can be more time and energy efficient in any business. My memo is now complete. But first, let us briefly recap on the steps needed to properly complete this task. Gather your supplies, check your workstation for hazards, open a blank document, set your top margins to 2 inches, set your tab stops to 1.5 inches, enter the to, from, date, and subject notations, enter your memo's body, enter the attachment notation, enter the reference initials, Enter the copy to notation, run spell check and proofread for errors, save and print your memo, and then finally staple your memo and all of its attachments. This now concludes my job skills demonstration. Thank you and have a very nice day.